my name's Laura, I work for London Wildlife Trust and today, along with my friend Toothy Rex, I'm going to teach you a little bit about defence mechanisms in nature. I love how a walk in nature can leave me feeling way more relaxed and calmer. But for much of the fantastic wildlife I am enjoying, the natural world can be a fraught and hazardous place where many organisms have had to evolve interesting and awesome defence mechanisms to survive. One of the most well-known defence mechanisms in nature is good old hiding, and lots of organisms have developed clever ways to do just that. Camouflage is one of the most well-known methods, being when something blends in so well with its background that predators can't see it. Camouflage can be created in different ways. Caddisfly larvae live in ponds and have to survive the daily onslaught of pond predators. They do this by building small structures out of the environment they are living in, spinning together combinations of stones, sand, leaves and twigs they find in the pond. They stick them all together with silk secreted from glands around their mouths. Here is one with a case made out of bits of leaves that is found in the pond. The caseless caddisflies can either fix this structure to a plant or to the side of the pond and hide out, waiting for food to come their way and well hidden from predators. More intrepid case caddisflies wrap their cases around them like a cosy sleeping bag and move around the pond to feed, nicely blending into the detritus found in the pond, like this jaunty fella in his snazzy outfit. Some creatures can camouflage themselves by actually changing their bodies to physically look like something else. Spot the difference between this picture and the next, as this common cuttlefish can not only change its colours, but also the texture of its skin to seamlessly blend into the various seabed environments, be they leafy, rocky or sandy. Amazing. Others have evolved over time to mimic or copy other organisms, which may be off-putting to their predators. One of the UK's most recognisable butterflies, the peacock butterfly, has an amazing pattern of eye-like spots on its wings, specifically designed to startle and confuse its predators. Hoverflies, who have no sting, do have markings to make them look more like stinging bees, and the wasp spider stripes not only give it its name, but also confuses its predators into thinking it is a venomous wasp at a glance. Where hiding or camouflage aren't an option, some animals have developed other ways to defend themselves, like armour. Hmm. As this newly hatched baby turtle rushes across the beach to enter the sea for the first time, its hard shell will help to protect it from the birds and other predators that may feed on it. Unlike humans who have their skeletons on the inside, lots of animals have exoskeletons, meaning that their skeletons are on the outside and protect the soft body underneath. Like with this stag beetle, as well as an exoskeleton, this shore crab also has pincers, which makes it look even more menacing and allows it to give potential predators a sharp nip. Ow. Some animals, like one of my favourites, the heroic hedgehog, protect themselves with spines. If threatened, the noble hedgehog curls its soft body up into a ball, exposing the spiny exterior. Strong muscles in the hedgehog's back means that the spines or quills stick outwards and upwards to ward off predators. And being as each adult hedgehog has between 5,000 and 7,000 spines, anyone sniffing around ends up with a painful face full. Some animals use colours or distinctive marks on their bodies to warn potential predators that they are not worth messing with, as they won't taste nice and even worse may be poisonous or venomous. The distinctive red and black markings of the ladybird, along with their pungent smell, warn the birds who may want to eat them that they will not be having a tasty meal due to the poisonous chemicals contained within. Ladybirds will also play dead. In doing so, they release a teeny amount of blood from their legs, which puts the birds right off their meal. As well as being good at maths, the adder can also use venom to defend itself. Creatures who use venom for defence puncture the skin of their attackers in some way, usually via teeth or a sting, and inject the venom into them. The adder is a shy creature and will usually only use venom as a last resort. The most extreme form of defence, however, is possibly the sacrifice of a body part. When threatened, this common lizard will shed its still moving tail to distract its attacker and then run away. It can then regrow its tail, though the new one is usually a bit shorter. All of these defence mechanisms can be quite costly resource wise to the animals who use them, as it takes a lot of energy to produce venom or regrow a limb. Therefore, one of the easiest methods of defence to recover from is good old fashioned running away. Deer, rabbits and hares can leap out of harm's way very quickly, with hares being recorded as running as fast as 45 miles per hour. Despite having a vicious venomous barb on its tail, the stingray will quite often swim off quickly as their preferred line of defence. It isn't just 
animals that defend themselves from predators. Have you ever noticed that the leaves of a holly tree are much spikier the lower down the tree they are? This is because these leaves are easier for grazing animals to reach. The holly has adapted to have spikier leaves lower down to ward these predatory herbivores away. Stinging nettles have needle-like hairs which are as fine as glass, meaning they break off easily when the nettle is brushed against and stick into anything which may harm the plant, causing the stinging irritation. Hawthorns and blackthorns, as indicated in the names, have thorns, as do these brambles. Roses are also prickly, and let's not forget the stabbiest of them all, the cactus. Though most plants and animals have evolved to protect themselves against predators, some have also evolved to protect themselves from the elements too. Many animals in the UK, like bats, frogs and toads, will hibernate over the colder months. The North American wood frog has also evolved to survive cold winters by using urine, we, and glucose, sugar, to create a type of antifreeze in its blood, meaning it can survive up to 65% of its body water being frozen during the colder months. Wow. It could be a dangerous world out there for our plants and animals, but the defence mechanisms they've evolved to survive show us how awesome nature really is. Nature itself can act as a defence mechanism for us as well. Connecting with nature has been shown to increase well-being and improve your mood. So why not head out and see if you can spot the differences in the shapes of leaves or the hoverflies pretending to be bees. Have fun and we'll see you next time. Bye!